I'm just a normal a normal guy with a, a curious fascination for unarmed combat. Um, mixed martial arts is basically the purest form of unarmed combat known to man. It involves all, all disciplines, all uh, combat disciplines, boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, taekwondo, karate, jujitsu. Um, it's just a pure combat. Connor, given the tradition of sport in this country, we have a proud tradition of Gaelic games, soccer, rugby and all the rest. How mm -hmm. does a young lad from Crumlin get into mixed martial arts? Um, well, I was no different growing up. I was always into football. You know what I mean, growing up where I'm from, there's two things you, you were known for. You were either good at playing football or you could fight. Um, and I was no different. I, fighting was always, it was always something I was interested in. Uh, football was what I wanted to do. Football was my first dreams. I always dreamt of playing. I always used to go out on my own. I was like seven, eight years old and put on my football boots and run up and down kicking the ball, dreaming of playing in front of a big stadium. Um, but just growing up then, I realised that I needed to be able to defend myself in certain situations. I just wanted to be able to defend myself and uh, it led me to combat sport and studying different, different ways the human body moves. And um, I was like nearly a mixed martial artist but without even known I was, you know what I mean? I, was, I just basically wanted to defend myself in any scenario. And I used to go from gym to gym, trying to learn different ways. When did you realise at what age that this was something you could carve out a career from? Um, well, I moved from Crumlin when I was 16, 17, and I was, I was doing it. I was still playing football at that time. I was doing MMA, I was doing boxing, I was doing this and doing that. But then I met a guy when I moved up to Lucan from Crumlin who was doing jiu-jitsu. Uh, Tom Egan, his name was, and I was doing some boxing at the time, some kickboxing. Um, and around the same time, we started seeing the UFC on TV, and we just every day in school we talk about it. He'd show me some jujitsu stuff. We'd be fighting, mess fighting in the class. I'd be showing him some boxing. He'd show me some submission moves. Uh, eventually, then I used to go up uh, and stay at his, stay up in his house up until there. Literally stayed there the whole weekend. He'd teach me how to grapple. He'd teach me some techniques, and I teach him some techniques. And basically, we'd fight at the end of it. Two little 16-year-old kids out the back of his shed, the concrete floor. I basically just basically punched the head off each other, really. But, and then that, that was that, you know, and that, that was my first obsession with it, you know, and I thought, like, I, I still didn't think I could do it. I was just kind of, still in my thoughts was self-defense. I just wanted to be able to defend myself in any situation. Then I met, then he met my coach, John Kavanagh, um, my coach today, John Kavanagh, and found out that he had a proper gym. That he also ran shows where you could actually compete properly. Um, and that was it. The two of us went down, met John, and that was that. John showed us a different approach to combat sport, a different way of thinking, the professional way. You know what I mean? Even though we were in a little small shack, in a little hut, it was a professional approach to unarmed combat. And it, it, he introduced me to jiu-jitsu, which changed my whole approach. It made me look at the finer details of, um, of combat. And then that was it. I was hooked. When I knew he had shows, I knew there was... I knew it was there. I knew I could get that ladder. You know, I knew I had something. I had a fascination with it. And even if it didn't, I still I couldn't shut it off. So I just rolled with it. Kept showing up every day. Got my ass whooped a couple of times. Whooped a couple of vases. Eventually, I became really good. And that's that. You keep mentioning there that you're, you're doing this, or you had, when you were starting out, you were doing it to defend yourself. Were you bullied when you were younger? Uh, I, I definitely wasn't bullied. You know? I, don't, I definitely wasn't bullied. But, you know, I, as you're growing up and you're walking around and you're... I used to live in a little estate, and when you explore outside that estate, you start meeting new people, and then fights would happen. Boys, you know what I mean? Young boys would fight, but it just stuck in my head a little bit more. When something like that happened, it was always in my head. I'd go back and think about it. I'd think about what happened, what position happened, and just think about things. I wasn't necessarily bullied or nothing like that, you know what I mean? Have, have my friends grew up. It's just, Crumlin's a tough area, you know what I mean? It's just the way it was, just growing up, but... Um, it just probably, like maybe people might just went on with the day and forgot about it. Me, I just kind of sat back and thought about it a lot more. And it led me to the, to the gym. This is your life, it's your job. Did you ever have, let's call it a normal job, Connor, mm -hmm. a nine to five? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, the Irish thing is to get into a trade straight away. I was no different. As soon as uh, I finished school, I was always getting pestered. What are you doing with your life? Are you doing this, doing that? Um, they didn't know what it was. They didn't know if... MMA was, they didn't know none of this, they didn't know I could make a career out of it, as far as they were concerned, my man and dad I'm talking about, as far as they were concerned, I was just getting into a cage and fighting with some other guy, they didn't know nothing about it, no one did really, but I knew, you know what I mean, I knew, but, uh, um, and then I got, a, I ended up getting a trade, just to keep them quiet, because I used to have a lot, lot of fights with me dad, a lot of what fights, what trade did you get? I ended up getting a trade as a plumber, 
um, literally up in the back arse and nowhere up in Wicklow, the Wicklow Mountains. And funny enough, that, that, that site was one of the biggest sites in Europe, Kiltiernan. It was right at that skiing place. Huge. And now it's just abandoned. Now it's just deserted. So I used to go up there at 6 o'clock, five, 5 o'clock in the morning I was on that M50. I used to have to walk to the N4 about half an hour from my house, wait for some Limerick guy that I didn't even know. He'd drive on the M4 and I'd have to flag him down. Nightmare, yeah, two hours down on the M50, two hours back, literally 14 hour days, and I was the, I was the first year, so I, was the, I had to go and do everything. I had to go to the shop, I had to go and get this and get that. So I always had trouble with that, and I was like, this isn't for me, this is not for me. How long then, did you last? Uh, I lasted 18, 18 months, Tony. But it was tough, you know what I mean? Just, it, wasn't, it wasn't the life for me, you know what I mean? And then, and then John said, because I was training with John as well at the time, and then John got on touch and says, uh, I have a show, I'm running a show, I'd like to fight on it. And then that was it. I just packed it in, didn't show up. My dad used to come in and punch the head on me and, and like, try and drag me out of bed. And I just wouldn't go, you know what I mean? I had an uproar for a good few years when I'm over it. Um, and that was it, I just pa- packed it in, quit, and then focused on training. And that's, I, knew, I, knew, I knew what was going to happen, I knew I was going to get here. They didn't. It was a lot of stressful years, you know what I mean? A lot of tough times. Um, but... I proved them wrong. I proved myself right. What makes you such a good fighter? Um, I don't know. I'm just curious about it. I'm curious about it. It's never... I mean, it's in my head 24-7. There's nothing else I can think of. I don't, I don't think about nothing else. If, if, and that's it. I'm just curious. Curiously fascinated with it. And I can't stop thinking about it. Everything I do in my life is, is related to this. I don't do nothing else if it's not got to do with fighting. You know what I mean? And that, that, that is why, you know what I mean? To, to be true, is that all, all, all you've got to do is show up. Is that not unhealthy? Um, I don't know. Do I look unhealthy? Take a look at this physique. I'm in phenomenal shape, in body and mind. To me, what's unhealthy is living an unhealthy life. To me, what's unhealthy is getting up and going through the same day, every day of your life, nine to five, in an office or in a... You know what I mean? That, that's unhealthy. That beats your mind. I don't, I don't work. I, what do I, I love what I do, and that's why I'm doing what I love. You know what I mean? That's why, that's why it's become a career for me, because I love it. I love what I do. So I don't think it's unhealthy. I, I, I feel good in my mind. You know what I mean, it's, it's, my, it's my life. What has the last six, seven months been like for you, Connor? A lot different. A lot different. You know what I mean? Get a lot more spotlight is on now. I'm, I'm no different. I don't do nothing any different. I still come to the gym. There's people trying to get me to do this and get me to do that. But I know that in order to be successful at this game, it needs to be 24-7. I need to be living in this gym. And that, that's, since this new facility, SBG Concord, has opened up, the setup now is I come here at 1 or 2 o'clock in the day and I'm here till 10 o'clock at night. There's no outside distraction. There's no nothing. Um, it's been crazy. The spotlight is on. The Irish public are watching. But it's what we planned. It's what we prepared. I knew I was going to be the person to bring martial arts to the public eye. And now it's happening. You know what I mean? There's two things I've learned from, all, from these past seven months. Number one is that hard work pays off. And number two is that dreams come true. And that's what's happening. Final one for you. I want to know what you want to achieve. Is it the fame? Is it to be champion? Is it the money? What, what do you want from, from this career? I don't, I don't care nothing about fame. Yeah? I don't care about fame. The gold belt is what I want. The two gold belts. I was a two-weight world champion in the previous organization. Now I'm on the big stage at the UFC. I want that featherweight belt and I want that lightweight belt. That's my goal. The money is going to come with that. Don't get me wrong. It's prize fighting. I'm after the money as well. But the, belt, the money comes with the belt. And the belt is what I'm focused on. I don't care about fame.